Praise the Lord. Shall we rise up to pray? Commit yourself into the hands of the Lord that God will minister his word to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Lord, we are grateful unto you, especially for a moment like this. Thank you, Father, for gathering us together to begin the day and the week in your holy presence. Lord, as we come to hear you, as your word goes forth, let the promise in your word of healing us come to fruition in our lives in Jesus' name. Foresters have challenged us. I am the Lord that healeth thee. Let that healing virtue from you, Father, flow into this assembly and unto everybody gathered to hear you this morning in Jesus' name. We bless you because you've had us, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. In the book of uh, Exodus chapter 15, I am going to read verse 26. Exodus chapter 15, verse 26. The topic we are considering this morning is partaking in the healing covenant. Partaking in the healing covenant. In the book of Exodus chapter 15, reading verse 26, and said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon Egyptians. For I am the Lord that he let the praise the Lord. Your hallelujah is more. I know. We will, we will still talk about it in this message. Eh? You say, eh, this is it. It is for us. And the Lord will visit you this morning in Jesus' name. You see, the verse we've read is actually the origin of the healing covenant God entered with his people, starting from the Old Testament era. And God makes it very clear here, he heals us. And if you look at that verse, it's not a momentary promise. It's couched in a way that I'm not just healing you for that time. I will continuously be healing you all the period. And to make you know that he can do it, if you look at that verse, God also makes it clear he controls diseases and sicknesses that come across our path. He said, I will not put, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon Egyptians. So he finds the way the conditions and the atmosphere around you, controlling the pathogens, the sicknesses, and whatever they are, COVID-19 or whatever, as they go floating around, make sure that the one he does not want to come to you will not come upon you. Brethren, we have a responsibility as ministers of the gospel to keep hammering and telling people that God heals. There's divine healing. You can't be true to the Bible without allowing the flock to know about that. On the flip side also, if you don't have the privilege of being a minister, you should also open your mind to the fact that God heals. He's a divine healer. So two of them must work together. I realize we are in a culture, in a state, United States of America, actually, where there is a felt unbelief when it comes to healing power by God, divine healing. You know, when you say you can feel darkness, you can feel that unbelief, you can feel that reluctance in terms of a lot of people in this place, despite the fact that as a ministry, we have a great man of God, God uses in the healing ministry, and things have been happening under his uh, ministry, in the worldwide crusade we keep having, but you still see that in the context of our geographical location, we are yet as a group 
to witness and max out the potentials that God has promised for us through the Bible in respect of healing us and keeping us healed forever and keeping us healed for a very long time. And that's essentially why we're bringing out this topic this morning to let us know, yes, your location, your environmental factor, advancing technology in a nation like this, there are things battling to dampen your belief and sustenance of hope in God as your healing. But God wants you to know it could change. And this morning it will change in Jesus' name. A part of the reason is also, if you look at America and the present setup of things, there are no domestic voices actually talking so much about divine healing in a nation like this. Unlike what it was in the time past. I took time to look at it. Up to recent times, this nation has had credible, wonderful ministers that well thrived, thrived in the field of healing ministry. Persons like T.L. Osborne, for instance, he died in 2013. He, but before he died, for 60 decades in his base at Tulsa, Oklahoma, he was going through the whole world propagating the power of God to heal. And he wrote so many books on healing. A classic one is called Healing the Sick. And in that book, he begins by saying, if you are sick, God wants to heal you. He will heal you this morning. And Osborne, T.L. Osborne, witnessed multitude of people that were healed and touched by God. It's not him alone, Kathleen Kuhlman. There's a lady called Kathleen Kuhlman, died in 1976. Mm -hmm. Kathleen was one of the most well-known healing ministers in the world. In fact, it's estimated that about two million people were touched in her healing ministry, healed, not really taught, healed, yeah. When you talk about touch, they were healed. We could go on and on. Charles Hunter and Francis Hunter that had a phenomenal healing ministry. But what do we see in the present day? And I'm telling you, I'm a witness to that. Popular ministers, and they will stand up and say that Days of healing are gone. It was in the Bible days that what God did before, he does not intend it to carry on up to this moment. And I'm asking you the question, is that correct? It is not. Get back again to verse 26 we read. And you will see that even if you read it and you are not a believer in healing ministry, in the healing power of God, you see that these verse present common things that no believer will quarrel about. And God said, if you do this, I'm attaching it to your healing. So how can you, when you are complying with that aspect, you now refuse to believe God can heal? Look at it again. If thou will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes. I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that he led thee. If you look at those, you see four conditions in that verse before he mentions healing. And these are four conditions that every believer who says is a child of God will subscribe to. Number one, if you diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord, thy God, of God, voice of God, how can you be a believer without hearing? Then you do that which is right in his sight. Every believer seeks to please God. And you keep his commandment. That's the third condition there. And then not number four, keep all his statutes. He said, when you do all these things, healing comes flowing to you. So you see, we are limiting God because we don't have faith in him. In Psalm number 105, Psalm 105, Psalm 105 in verse 37, Psalm 105 verse 37, look at it, very great provision. In Psalm 105, in verse 37. Are you there? Please turn your Bible quickly. In Psalm 105, 
verse 37. He brought them forth also with silver and gold. Can you read the rest with me? One, two, go. And there was not one feeble person among their tribes. Who is he talking about? Israel in the Old Testament. If you look at that verse of scripture, it talks about a span of 40 years, brought them out from Egypt and sent them to the land of promise consistently. He has spoken in Genesis chapter, uh, Exodus chapter 15. Now here we see them in the wilderness all through. You will now see that for 40 years continuously, God remained their healer and kept on healing them. And the question is, did it really end in the Old Testament? Was it an Old Testament affair, done deal, and so on? No. Look at Matthew's Gospel, chapter 8. In the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 8, look at verse 16. Matthew, chapter 8. I'm going to read verse 16. In verse 16, the scriptures say, And when the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirit with his word. And did what? And healed all that were sick. He healed every one of them that were sick. The Lord will heal you this morning in Jesus' name. If we believe Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever, if he healed them all that day, he could still heal you all of all your diseases and heal every one of us gathered this morning in Jesus' name. Many of us don't get the full benefits of the divine healing God has made available for us because of factors that relate to advancing medicine. I tell you that you depend on the doctors more than the Lord who made the body itself. Because of skepticism, evil report, maybe there are people doing shady, shadowy things, saying it's healing, healing that goes on there. God is saying, bypass them. Look at myself. Look at my word. Commit yourself to doing that. And when you do it, you will not be an exception in Jesus' name. Romans chapter 8 in verse 11. Romans chapter 8, reading verse 11. In Romans chapter 8, verse 11, it says, But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. If the spirit of Christ dwells in you, it says your body that is mortal, he will quicken it. He will bring healing to that. And this morning, I'm assured your healing will not bypass you in Jesus' name. Three points. Number one. The provisions in the precept for healing. The provisions in the precept for healing. Precept, that the law, P-R-E-C-E-P-T. The provisions in the precept for healing. Point number two, we're going to look at the process and the power for healing. The process and the power for healing. Finally, we look at the profiting from the promise of healing profiting from the promise of healing. Point number one, take off. The process or the provisions in the precept for healing. Isaiah chapter 53. In the book of Isaiah chapter 53, I am going to read verses 4 and 5. Isaiah chapter 53 Verses 4 and 5. Remarkable verses. Please go there. Isaiah chapter 53, verses 4 and 5. Surely, you see, it says certainly. It's not we are in doubt. Surely he had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. 
and with his stripes we are healed. Talking about Jesus. And you see that this verse of scripture is remarkable because it's expanding the covenant of divine healing beyond our imagination and beyond what we read originally. You will see that it is what I could call the combo package when it comes to divine healing. The, 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 the word of God is what you need to concentrate on. It is a combo package. If you look at verses 4 and 5, you will see diverse kinds of situations and ailments and maladies that could come to you health-wise, which these two verses are telling you is all covered in. It talks about griefs. It talks about sorrows. It talks about sins and transgressions. It talks about lack of peace, emotional challenges. It talks about healing all kinds of diseases and sicknesses. Every one of them, he takes them entirely out from you. In First Peter chapter four, chapter two, First Peter chapter two, in verse twenty-four, you see Peter lifting that same verse of scripture or reference to that and confirming that Isaiah reference belongs to you as a New Testament believer. Look at 1 Peter chapter 2 in verse 24. 1 Peter chapter 2 in verse 24. Very pointed confirmation. He say, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree that we, being dead to sin, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. Picking it from there and telling you in this New Testament time, this is applicable unto you. You see, brethren, in the medical profession, in the physical literal world where we are, they engage in what I call patient education. It's very deliberate. When you go through emergency session or see your physician and they have cause to discharge you, they do what they call patient education because they want to perfect your healing. Make sure that you, it continues along the path they're expecting and they tell you if this happens, come back, but this is what you're expecting and this one and that one. Even if you want to go routine surgery, if you want to go through routine surgery, they will educate you, patient education as it will. Brethren, God has his own patient education. He has a, his own method. He has his own type of education that he wants us to get involved in. What is that type? Meditate on my word. Look into the word of God. Pick those verses that talk about healing. You see, I want to give you something that will be for all purpose application. When you know who you are, when you know what the Bible says, and when you get to the verses of the scripture and you look at them and see them as what God has already promised you, you don't need your pastor, you don't need the leaders. When that challenge comes, you could on your own stay there because you know what God already provided. You seek God, answer comes, and it will come this morning in Jesus' name. Proverbs chapter 4. Let's see God's patient education. Patient, education for his patient. Education for those he wants to heal. Education for those he wants to permanent, be healed on a permanent basis. You don't depend on this one or the other one. You want to go for deliverance and so on. He said, look at my education. Look at my enlightenment to you. In Proverbs chapter 4, reading verses 20 to 22. Proverbs chapter 4. From verse 20 down to 22, it says, My son, attend to my ways. Incline thy ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thy eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. Can we read verse 22 together? For they are life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh. Can we read verse 22 again? For they are life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh. 
this morning that health is coming on you in Jesus' name. Let's meditate on my word. Look at that word. Meditate on it. Don't meditate on the diagnosis. Don't meditate on the prognosis by the doctors. Don't meditate on the symptoms or ailments you are seeing. Meditate on my word. Whatever nature affliction of affliction you have or sickness you have, get back and meditate on the word of God. Brethren, many a time we are living with examples of people that come up and say, look, doctors gave me six months. But here I am six years after. And you ask them, I say, it's just God. God made it possible. And I'm telling you this morning, no matter the prognosis and diagnosis, God is going to cancel them. And he's going to reverse all the sicknesses in your life. And you will come over here and give us testimony in Jesus' name. Hezekiah in the Bible is a good example. Isaiah told him it's over with. He went back, meditated, and said, God, you said if I do this, do this, do this, I was able to finish them all. Heal me, O Lord. God sent back Isaiah to the same king and told him, it's reverse. Today is your turn. A reversal is coming to you in Jesus' name. Jeremiah chapter 30. In Jeremiah chapter 30, look at verse 17. Jeremiah chapter 30 Reading there in verse 17. Jeremiah chapter 30 in verse 17. He says, oh, get there, please. Get there. It's rich in itself. I don't want to just rush it. No, we, you know, we have combined two services with a lost supper, but it doesn't matter. Let's give time to this one and see what God is telling us because he wants to do a detailed, comprehensive work for us. In uh, Jeremiah chapter 30, you are there. Look at verse 17. It says, For I will restore health unto thee. To whom? To you. You are having it this morning in Jesus' name. They say Americans don't believe God for healing because you are an exception this morning in Jesus' name. He said, I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee of thy wounds, saith the Lord. Because of what? They call thee an outcast, saying, This is Zion, whom no man seeketh after. Brethren, this verse is telling you the desperation God is looking for in your life for him to now come and heal you. When you get a position, you are Zion, um, they call you uh, Zion. Outcast, no man is seeking you. Zion, somebody that belongs to God, but is weird and so on. But no man seeks after you. You are an outcast. What does that mean? When the society, when you break the societal norm and prioritize God as your healer, and the society says, This is no, we don't believe that. When you get to that level, you see God as number one. He is the one that will heal you. You know, part of, I was hearing a message. When some of these messages come, they just don't, it's based on factors and situations on the ground. This man, very popular, big ministry, powerful in, in his influence. I was saying, twisting scriptures that the apostolic era is gone and then healing is no longer there, this one and the other one, and talking endlessly. And then he was talking and saying, it's in Africa only. You, they go and deceive them and they come up and give uh, miracle testimonies and so on. I said, what is this guy talking about? But then he opened my eyes. Yes, Africa, low health care, low this thing. And that's where we have lots of miracles taking place. Outcasts. When you talk about emergency room and health, when you get there, it will force you to now start calling upon God. When you look at the state of the medical health, when you look at the fact that 
God is the only one I'm waiting upon. You will see you will trust him so much that it will be a breakthrough for you. And God hears such desperation because you're already an outcast. And God is ministering to us in a country like this. Yes, there's advance in medicine. Yes, there are, we have access to this and that. But can't you look upon me? Can't you for one moment look unto me as the one that will heal you? You will look on him this morning and your healing will come in Jesus' name. Numbers chapter 21. Look at Numbers chapter 21. In the book of Numbers chapter 21, reading verses 8 and 9. Numbers chapter 21, verses 8 and 9. It says from verse 8, And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent and set it upon a pole. It shall come to pass that everyone that is beaten, when he looketh upon it, what will happen? Shall live. And Moses made a serpent of brass and put it upon a pole. And it came to pass that it, if a serpent had beaten any man, when he beheld a serpent of brass, he lived. You will live in Jesus' name. Especially when you connect it with the New Testament in John chapter 3 verse 14. You can read on your own. John chapter 3 verse 14. Jesus owned up and said, As Moses lifted up the serpent, so shall the Son of Man be lifted up. If you're ever going to look upon that Son of Man that is lifted up there, you will live and you are going to live today in Jesus' name. I ask you again. Whom are you looking towards? Some of us are here. We claim we are knowledgeable. We claim we are serving God. But when sickness comes or a rattle sort, we start going to palm readers for them to do some diagnostics for us. And we start running to herbalists. We start going to stargazers. We are anxious. We want to know the outcome of it. And we get into some unorthodox way of desiring and seeking for healing. And God is saying, no, it doesn't work that way. Way. Look unto me, look unto me, because the promised healing by God is comprehensive, detailed, and for all purpose. He is sufficient for what you want, and you are having him this morning in Jesus' name. <laughs> Jeremiah chapter 33, in verse 6. Jeremiah chapter 33, I'm going to read verse 6. In Jeremiah chapter 33, in Verse 6, behold, God is saying, look up, behold, I will bring health and cure. It's coming to you this morning in Jesus' name. I will cure what? Them. Everybody here, he said, I will cure them. And we reveal unto them the abundance of peace and truth. No man's sighting. When the healing power of God comes, it comes in original form. And the peace of God will be with you after that in Jesus' name. Point number two, the process and the power for healing. The process and the power for healing. Jeremiah chapter 17, look at verse 14. In Jeremiah chapter 17, in verse 14. Jeremiah chapter 17 I'm going to read verse 14. That's a passionate prayer. And this prayer is detailed. It contains great component parts that makes for permanent healing, immediate and permanent healing. In Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 14, he says, Heal me, O Lord. And what will happen? And I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved. For thou art my praise. You see, God wants you to initiate the healing. When you initiate the healing, it's far better. This man was seeking God. I'm fired up. I want you to heal me. Just by the time we finish speaking today, and we call you to go to God in prayers, seek God. Talk to him first. I will summarize eventually, and we're sure God will visit us, but he wants you to initiate it and call upon God, heal me. And you see in this verse, two combination of two things that will make your healing very permanent, elastic, effective, and lasting. 
it deals with issues of sin and sickness. This man said, heal me. And then this man also said, save me. God is not a magician. He wants your heart. And if you're able to talk to him about your salvation, I'm tired of sin. I need Jesus as Lord and Savior. Then your healing has a tendency to be more permanent. He could give you healing. You go back to your sin. Then you are going to lose that. God's healing power knows no limitation except you refuse to deal with your sin. When your sin is not dealt with, there is no way you will sustain that sickness, that is uh, healing, because it will come back ultimately, even in worse situation than before. Look at Mark's Gospel, chapter 2. Gospel according to Mark, chapter 2, reading from verse 1. Mark, chapter 2, from verse 1. Component, two component parts, healing and then salvation or living in victory over sin. You need to deal with sin, even as God heals you. Mark chapter 2, reading from verse 1. And again, he entered into Capernaum after some days, and it was noise that he was in the house. And straightway many were gathered together, insomuch that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much as about the door, and he preached the word unto them. And they come unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. They were desiring him to heal him. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was, and when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, what did he say to him? Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. He has seen it. Sin is holding him in bondage. It's part of the reason that he is not healed immediately. Jump over to verses 8 to 12 and see the Lord capitalizing on it and telling you these two things must come together. Verses 8 to 12. And immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they saw reason within themselves, because they were saying, how can he? Nobody can he forgive sin except God. We so reason within them, say, he said unto them, why reason you these things in your hearts? Whether is, is it easier to say to the sick of the palsy, thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, arise and take up thy bed and walk, but that you may know that the Son of Man had power on earth to forgive sins, as well as to heal. He said to the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, arise. Take up thy bed and go thy way into thy house. Can we read verse 12 together? Very interesting. And immediately he rose and took up the bed and went forth before them all, insomuch that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, We never saw it on this fashion. I ask you again. Is that Jesus dead? Is he still alive? Can he do the same thing? He will visit you this morning. He will touch you this morning in Jesus' name. See, the issue of healing and sin, Jesus has to deal with them. John chapter 5, the book of John in chapter 5. Reading from verse 8, John chapter 5, I am going to read verses 8 and 9, then we jump over to verse 14. John chapter 5, look at verses 8 and 9. In verse 8, Jesus said unto him, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. Look at verse 9, are you seeing it? And immediately the man was made Whole, and took up his bed and walked, and on the same day was the Sabbath day. Immediately, the man stood up. He healed him and set him free, and set him free, and the man was freely set free from the sickness. Now go to verse 14. In verse 14, afterward, Jesus findeth him in a temple and said unto him, Behold, Thou art made whole, sin no more, 
lest a worse thing come unto thee. So it's not just receiving healing. I'm sure you'll receive it today. But I'm saying go back and do house cleansing exercise. Remove iniquity from your camp. Remove all those associations with evil things so that you'll be assured that your healing will be permanent and it will be permanent this morning in Jesus' name. Do you know, brethren, when people doubt God's power to heal, I keep saying maybe they've not read their Bible very well. I was looking at it. Look at Acts chapter 10. You are going to see in this Acts chapter 10 verse 38 that the healing power God has promised is backed by the whole trinity. The Godhead, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. One is enough. When we talk about Jesus going about healing, and he was healing and healing, but when God the Father is involved, Holy Spirit is involved, and you still keep telling me, no, healing is God. It's not going to happen. It doesn't happen. And this one, let me substitute it for other things. Acts chapter 10. I said all this to have you get to Acts chapter 10 in verse 38. Are you there? It says, how God, that's number one, anointed who? Jesus. It's number second in the Trinity of Nazareth with what? The Holy Ghost. Three of them. And with power, who went about to win good and what healing all that we are oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. You see the combo, three of them together. But significantly, if you look at that verse of the scripture, he said he went about doing good, correct. If I ask you, and I say, you know how we say, we know our language, God is good. What do you respond? God is good? Uh -huh. Somebody will now say, this goodness of God in this verse 38, it doesn't apply to healing. Is it correct? Oh, because if he's good all the time, and the next one is unhealing all. Which means God that is good all the time, who heals all the time, will still heal. He will heal you today in Jesus' name. Doubt your doubts. He will heal you today in Jesus' name. I don't want American amen. Eh? American amen is the one that is based on unbelief. We have everything for us. Um, have I taken my boost? Have I taken, how many of them have I taken? This one and the other one. That's where your faith is. Uh, this uh, health condition. The doctor is telling me this. And the, the best of professional. He knows what he's saying. And your faith is in it. Today, you will put God as number one. He will be your healer in Jesus' name. Yes, he's good all the time. You see, let me tell you something. Mechanism of healing in the present day hospital by experts that are knowledgeable. I'm not disregarding them. They're doing their work and they're trained to do that. And by all means, follow the instructions if you have cause to get encounter with, encounter with them. Do you know what they normally do? With that, their training. For them to attack a particular set of illness, they will do a lot of clinical trials and look at the disease and the people that are involved and their age group and everything and categorize them. And then they are now coming to see that if you have these symptoms, this group of people that have these symptoms, if you apply this medication to them as a group, it now will affect whatever is taking place in their healing process and the challenges. So they kind of have a ger generic form of healing prescription for categorized group of people within the group itself. And that's why a doctor could, after hearing you, know the class of sickness and what prescription, and he keeps doing it for every person that has the same presentation. And many a time it works because they've classified it with lots of clinical trials. That was part of why we had delay in the COVID vaccine. They were doing all the trials to be sure with a group of people that volunteered and so on. Just to tell you exactly what I am telling you and to illustrate to you what I want to tell you. But unfortunately, you see, their knowledge is limited. Unfortunately, also, some sicknesses keep evolving. And most importantly, there are those that 
still defy that class. They have now resistant condition. They call it chronic. It's just, even though you are manifesting all this, it's going to just continue that way. But for this God we are talking about, he doesn't walk through that. That's the God that says something. In Luke chapter 1, verse 45, 37, let's look at what he said. When you come to, when it comes to deal with your challenges and sicknesses, in Luke chapter 1, in verse 35, it's 37 rather, sorry. Luke chapter 1, in verse 37. Is there any resistant sickness before him? Never. Look at it. He said, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. Nothing like the one that is outside that class. With my God, who knows everything, he's telling you, even if that condition is chronic, outside the class, today, he will touch you. And you will take your healing in Jesus' name. Apart from it, do you know there are some sicknesses that are outside class that defy every form of treatment because... There are evil forces, demonic powers behind them. And the doctors do all they can. You run all the tests you can. It defies solution. Man has failed. Do we tell such people, get off? There's no way. And then we don't expose this teaching to them and let them know that there's something behind what we are seeing physically. And Jesus dealt with cases like that. If it's the same today, yesterday, and forever, he will do the same, and he will do it here in Jesus' name. Look at Luke chapter 13 and see some of those medically impossible situations that the spirit is behind it, and no doctor will see it. How can you put demons in the lab and then get, go to lab test, and the result comes and they tell you this is it? No, it's not possible. How can you do that? And Jesus met that person and saw it immediately. And that's what I'm telling you. I'm seeing something, and I'm telling you, agree with me. When we pray today, no sickness will be here again in Jesus' name. Luke chapter 13, are you there? Look at verse 11. And behold, there was a woman which had what? What did she have? A spirit of infirmity. There's an infirmity. If there's something diagnosed, they call, that infirmity has a name. But it's a spirit that's behind that. So to deal with that, you must deal with the spirit, not the manifestation you are seeing. This woman had a spirit of infirmity. How long? 18 years. You can imagine. Did she just stay home? She must have sold all she had. Like that woman with issue of blood. She must have done everything. Gone to this physician and do. They use him as a guinea pig. Use as a guinea pig trial and error. So she did everything. And could in no wise lift up herself. And when Jesus saw her. Jesus will see you today. He will, if it's not you, he will see that person you have a burden for today as you pray in Jesus' name. He called her to him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loose from thy infirmity. You see, when Jesus comes in and gives command, he's the head of principalities and powers. And that's why I'm speaking authoritatively on his behalf. He will speak this morning. And the powers of darkness will yield in Jesus' name. Verse 13. And he laid his hands on her. And what happened? Immediately she was made straight and glorified God. You are going to glorify God today in Jesus' name. And that power is still at work. And the Lord will visit you. Finally, point number three. Profiting from the promise of healing. Profiting from the promise of healing. You see, I want you to tell yourself, tell yourself literally that when it comes to healing, you are no longer to be a spectator. I will no longer be a spectator. Say that. Let God hear. Let demons hear. I will no longer be a spectator. It shall be so for you in Jesus' name. 
You know, the people that are spectators, that people, they're hearing message like this and they're cracking their head. Does he understand my medical condition? Does he understand the country I am? Does he understand the expert I have? Does he understand that this is medically impossible? You are a spectator and others are receiving their healing. Today, it is ending in Jesus' name. Mark chapter 10. Look at it. Mark's gospel chapter 10. Reading from verses 46 down. Mark chapter 10. See a man that made up his mind and say, enough is enough. I will no longer be a spectator. I want to get my own portion today. In Mark chapter 10, I'm going to read from verse 46. From verse 40, 46, it says, And they came to Jericho. As he went out of Jericho with his disciples, and great number of people blind, great number of people blind, Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. This man took initiative. Jesus was on the last lap of his visit, on his way to cross the cross of Calvary. He has performed tremendous miracles. But blind Bartimaeus has heard so much about him until he came and had the opportunity to have one-on-one -on -one with Jesus. He made up his mind. He made up his mind that he will not carry that sickness that had made him blind over the years any longer. I don't want to be a, a, a spectator any longer. I am going to get to the Lord himself, focus upon him, for him to be my healer. Look at verse 49 and 50, or to 52, in from verse 49. And Jesus stood still, because this man made up his mind, I don't want to be a spectator, I want to be a recipient. And Jesus stood still. The Lord is standing still for you when he sees your faith this morning in Jesus' name. And commanded him to be called. And they called a blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort. Rise, he called thee. Somebody will be comforted today in Jesus' name. He casting away his garment, rose, and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said unto him, What will thou that I should do unto thee? Brethren, that's the question he will still ask you. When we start praying, are you challenged enough to say, motivated enough to tell Jesus, I don't want to be a spectator. I need that healing power upon me today. No matter how medically impossible. The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I may receive my sign. And Jesus said unto him, what he will say to you today. That's why I want you, what did Jesus say to him? Which he will say to you, want to go, go thy way. Thy faith had made thee whole. He will tell you this morning. And what will happen after that? Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. Immediately you are receiving your healing this morning in Jesus' name. He asked the man a question. What do you want me to do from you. And the man told him point blank, this is it. Look at a case of another sister in Mark chapter 5. Mark's gospel chapter 5, reading verses 25 to 29. It's not brothers alone. You can decide, brother, sister, old or young, I refuse to be a spectator when it comes to my healing power. I refuse to be a spectator. Look at another sister, bottled up her mind, made up her mind and said, look, I must profit from this healing power. I don't want the medical professional, medics to be draining my finances, co-pay, whatever it is. I just want to believe God for my permanent healing. Mark chapter 5. Look at verses 25 to 29. From verse 25. And a certain woman, which had an issue of blood, how long? Twelve years. And has suffered many things of many physicians. I feel for this woman. Sold her houses. Maybe lost her marriage. Maybe became isolated. Lonely. So, may, suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing better, 
but grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind him, she made up her mind, I'm going to this Jesus. I've heard about him. I want to not just be a spectator, I'm going to receive. Came in the press behind him, touched his garment, for she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. Make up your mind the same this morning. And straight away, when she did that, the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. You will feel, have a feeling today, and your healing will be permanent in Jesus' name. Just like he asked blind Bartimaeus, he's asking you, what will thou have me do for you? He's just looking for you to respond that God... I will stop making little gods of advance in medical care, of opinions of experts, of societal norms, acceptable way of going through healing. I just Lord, don't want them to be cloud me, O oh Lord. And I am going to depend upon you to heal me. Why am I so much enthusiastic and emphatic in pushing it? Because I know, and I know, Part of why Jesus came on earth is not to put sickness upon us. No. He came to be the solution. And there's no way you say, I'm sick. It's my cross. I'm sick. It's my affliction. I'm sick. God is putting it upon. No. Jesus is a solution that came to solve the challenge of sin. My, Luke's Gospel chapter 4. Look at Luke chapter 4 in verse 18. Gospel according to Luke chapter 4. Reading verse 18, Jesus saying what he came to do. And you see, he came to bring relief. He came to heal. He came to set the captives free. In Luke chapter 4, in verse 18, he says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to do what? Heal the broken hearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. You are being set free today in Jesus' name. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 4. The Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 4, reading verses 23 to 24, 23 and 24. Please go there. Matthew chapter 4, verses 23 to 24. This is the ministry of Jesus Christ. He did it that time. He's still doing it today. In Matthew chapter 4, verses 23 to 24. From verse 23. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and doing what? healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. Every one of them. You know the effort he put. How can you say he's now putting sickness upon you, allowing you to do that? He went out healing all manner of sicknesses and all manner of diseases. He will heal us this morning. In verse 24, And his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with diverse diseases and torments, and those which were possessed with devils, and those which were lunatic, and those that had the palsy. What happened? And he healed them. He's healing you today in Jesus' name. The same Jesus that healed all manner of sicknesses, he's here to heal. The point is, are you ready to receive from him? Jesus, if you remember, said healing is a children's bread. When you talk about bread, the least a father can put on the table for the baby. And Jesus said it is the children's bread. Are you ready to receive that bread today? 
Rise up and let's go to God in prayers. Talk to him directly and tell him, Lord, I want to meditate upon your way. I don't want to meditate on breakthrough in medical science. Waiting till they come to me so that they will apply it to my condition. I am depending on you for now. You are my healer. You are the one that will set me free. Maybe I'm, there's a spirit behind my ailment. It's a spirit behind my infirmity. Lord, deal with them now. Deal with them now. Commit yourself into the hands of and tell God every part of my body, every one of them without an exception, I bring before you, Lord. Let that healing power flow. Let it flow, oh Lord. Let it flow. Let it flow. Let it flow. Remove the limitation. Remove the la doubt. Remove all the blockages, all the hindrances on the way. Tell the Lord you are my healer. You are my healer. I'm not preparing my mind that I'm going under. Even though the doctor said this is impossible, this is medically impossible, Lord, I am believing you. I am trusting you. Today is my day of visitation. Jesus is meeting you as he met blind Bartimaeus. He is meeting you today. He is touching you today. Are you opening up to him? Are you opening up to him? He healed them all. He's ready to heal you. He is ready to heal you. He is ready to touch you. He is ready to touch you. Believe God for your healing. Believe him for the manifestation of the power of God. He sent his word and healed them and set them free from all their sicknesses. That word is going forth today. That word is going forth today. If the spirit that raised Christ up dwells in you, he will quicken your mortal bodies. He will quicken your mortal bodies. Turn over. Turn to Jesus. Make him your appointed physician. Let him be the healer, the healer that you have. The one that will heal you entirely and you remain healed. When Jesus heals, he's permanent. But you must deal with sin. Go and sin no, no more. Lest a worse thing come upon you. You must make up your mind. You must determine that, yes, Lord, you are my healer. You are my healer. I'm looking unto you. I'm looking unto you. Open your mouth and call upon God. Thank you so much. His healing is comprehensive. Physical, internal, emotional, whatever it is, psychological, healing power of God is coming today. I wish above all you prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospereth. Healing for your body, healing for your spirit, man, healing for your soul. The combo package is coming. Remember, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, they are all involved in healing. Jesus went about healing and they backed him. They supported him. His healing power is being displayed to you today. You will receive that healing. You will receive that healing. You will receive that healing. You will overcome all the doubts that have been holding you back from healing. Oh, believe God. Believe God. Believe God. Believe God that today your healing is coming. Believe God that today your healing is coming. In Jesus' name, we pray. What's he praying? I just, I just need to give you a prayer point before we bring everything to a close. I'm reading from the book of Matthew chapter 13, verse 58. You don't need to open your Bible. Just be in the mood of prayers. It says in Matthew 13, verse 58, And he did not many mighty works there because of their 
unbelief. I want you to particularly pray about unbelief. That God will heal you of unbelief before we start praying. Unbelief that he's about to move in our midst just now, this moment. Unbelief that because maybe I've attended a lot of crusades, it has not happened. How can it be in this location? God wants you to tell him, please, any type of unbelief that will have abide in me, Lord, remove them. Hey, when I step out in the future, something happens, some belief comes to knock it off, God remove them. I found that God's healing covenant is yours. As we minister today, you will receive it. Open your mouth and pray against the spirit of unbelief. God, cure me from me. Remove it from me. So that when we conclude in prayers, I will receive my miracle. Open your mouth and call upon God. Oh, heal me from unbelief. Depending on things that I'm seeing, on technology, Technology and whatever it is, Lord, I'm looking unto you today. Unbelief will not hold me back. Unbelief will not hold me back. Jesus went to his own community because of unbelief. He could not do mighty works there. We want him to do mighty works in our midst. He will do it in your affairs. He will do it in your life. Only believe. Tell God, help down my unbelief. Help down my unbelief. And God will do it. Pray. In Jesus' name, we pray. We pray in Jesus' name. As much as your strength could carry you, and if you stand up, that would be wonderful. And raise those hands up as we bring everything to a close. And then I will leave you to the healing power God will release in this place in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we pray. Hey. Everlasting Father, we come before you, not just as our Father alone, but a God of all flesh, who said, is there anything too difficult for me? Lord, I present every flesh represented here before you, asking, Lord, that you will take over all the brethren that are here and people hearing, Father, and do an effective healing in their bodies in Jesus' name. As a God of all flesh, any part of the body that needs repairing, reconstruction, recreating, Lord, do that creative work this moment in Jesus' name. From the head region, oh Lord, are there things that are not working as they ought to work there? Are there infirmities within the head, within the head region, in the eyes, in the nose, in the ears of your people? Let your healing power go to those places and strengthen everything in Jesus' name. From the neck region to the chest region, oh Lord, the stomach area and all the areas of the body parts of your people going to their loins, their legs, oh Lord, even their elbows, the joints and thighs. Let your healing power touch them in Jesus' name. At the name of Jesus, every sickness will bow. Whether named or don't name, we are directing the name of Jesus and we are telling them, bow in Jesus' name. External and internal organs of your people, Father, you know them more than they know themselves. Lord, let your healing power go to those places and restore health to them in Jesus' name. Every satanic, demonic, engineered ailments in the midst of your people, Lord, as Jesus commanded, we are giving the command. All the spirits of infirmity, get out in Jesus' name. Anything my father has not planted in the bodies of the people of God, I uproot them. Every one of them, they are going. They are going. As they are rooted, health will come to your people in Jesus' name. 
We are living in troublous times. And there are people that are emotionally disturbed, oh Lord. And they are saying, who can deliver me? They are shedding tears in their bed. And they are saying, who can set me free? They are troubled, almost being suicidal. Let your peace come upon them. Oh, peace to your people that passes understanding. Come on them in Jesus' name. Father, are there people standing for others who are not here? And they are raising their hands and they are burdened about them even as we are praying. Your word, the command in your name, it knows no barrier. We send forth your healing power to those souls for which your people are burdened upon. We say, hear the word of God. All those sicknesses and infirmities be healed in Jesus' name. We bless you, Father, because you've done it. Glory, honor, and adoration be ascribed unto you. In Jesus' name we pray. It is done in Jesus' name.